Alright, so what's going on, Shaholics? I am back on the end in Montauk, and uh, today's gonna be the first day we're gonna try and get out, catch some fish, make a video for you guys. And uh, I've actually been here for three days, but uh, I've been on some really, really heavy pain medication for my jaw because I had my wisdom teeth removed. So, like, right now it's hurting to talk a little bit, but. Um, you know, we're just gonna we're trying to make it happen. You know, I'm not bleeding anymore. Uh, you know, I'm feeling a little bit better, and uh, I found you know some decent action yesterday on the flats with the fly rod. So uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna break out the fly rod and uh, try and catch some stripers this evening, and uh, maybe into dark. So let's hit it. We made it to the harbor, and uh, I just want to start off by saying that I probably won't be saying much in this video just because I'm already starting to get the uh, the flavor of blood in my mouth. So I'm going to take it easy on uh, the narration, or try to, unless we start catching some crazy fish. But I think for the most part, we're just going to be, uh, you know, catching schoolies. That's something we can anticipate. And yesterday I was using a small little clouser. And I mean, for the schoolies, you could probably throw anything small that matches, you know, a little profile. But uh, I mean, for the most part, these fish are all feeding on really tiny sand eels. So, um, you know, they're pretty aggressive. There's a lot of bait around, so they're not going to be too finicky. I mean, if there's any larger fish around, they may, may be a little bit more finicky because they're a little bit smarter. But uh, yeah, let's get uh, weighted up and get out on the flats, uh, try and catch some fish. All right, so we're moving out towards uh, the end of this flat here, and uh, we probably got about an hour, hour and a half left of the outgoing tide, so the water's pretty low. I'm actually standing on top of the flat right now where it's like, you know, six inches to a foot of water, and then there's a channel out there where it drops off to about, like, I don't know, two, three feet of water, then there's another flat on the other side of it, and, uh, you know, because the water's so low, that channel is like a magnet right now for these stripers, and uh, yesterday, you know, mostly all the fish were like 15, 20 inches. And uh, if we can get anything over 20 inches, we'll be doing pretty good. There's one. All right. Pretty immediate right there. Third cast or something. Feisty little guy. It's not bad. Probably about like 16, 18 inches. And he freaking choked it. All the way freaking down there. Good thing I have some pliers. All right, there he goes. One on the board. All right, so that was a nice little guy to start off the evening. That's probably about the average size I was catching yesterday. And uh, I mean, I know that there's, you know, 30 plus inch fish in here, even 36 inch plus fish, but uh, they're definitely just far and few between. And uh, you just kind of have to, you know, put the time in really. I mean, if we can get a 35 inch, 36 inch fish, that's probably gonna be around 18, 20 pounds. And if you guys remember, last year my goal was to try and catch a 20 pound uh, striper on the fly back in this area i couldn't do it i didn't accomplish that that goal but uh, this year hopefully we can get it done we're going to fish harder with the fly than you know i ever have before and hopefully we can get it done there's one Caught him by uh, casting up current and stripping pretty fast down current. Another little guy. Still really feisty, pulling pretty good. Right at the end of the nose. Nice little fella. 
there's another one. Boom, baby. Whoa, there he goes. Are you kidding me? He broke the hook on this little clouser. Ah, oh, man. But uh, since I'm holding the clouser, notice I'm using a, a loop uh, knot or a pollen knot. That helps the fly have a little bit more action in the water. And like you can see, the fish are loving it. But it's kind of a bummer that little guy broke the hook. I mean, or it's a good thing because if we caught anything really big, this hook would have easily probably snapped off. All right, back in action. Rapala knot, loop knot. Gonna try a bigger clouser. Have a little bit stronger hook. Oh, there's one. I'm surprised how hard these little guys are pulling. They're just getting their head in that current and they're pulling hard, man. Like, it's not a big fish. This fish is probably like 18 inches, but he's ripping line out. I don't know, he feels bigger. Maybe he is bigger, I don't know. Nope, he's not bigger. <laughs> Yep, a little pip squeak, but you know, they're fun, they're pretty. I'm feeling like this is the time. If there's any bigger fish, we're gonna get them now before it gets too dark and right at the end of the ebb tide. Still got quite a bit of current. It's lasting a lot longer than I thought it would. There he is. Boom. Yeah, I love catching them on the flats like this. It's just like really nice and easy like that. Like, look at that. And it's fun. You know, you don't have to get down deep. You don't have to really cast far because I'm wading out pretty far and you're just casting right into the channel. And it's only like, you know, half a foot or a foot deeper than where I'm standing, really. Oh, lost them. Probably throw right back out there and get another one. There he is. Boom. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I love these kind of evenings. All right, come here, you little squeaker. I think every time they come up to the surface they have followers because it looks like more than one fish is splashing every single time these fish come up. Oh, a little bit bigger I think. Nice, yeah, a little bigger. It's probably about 20 inches. Whew. Beautiful little guy. Go get big, buddy. feels a little bigger okay okay here we go he's ripping line out it's definitely a bigger fish no what the freak happened gosh dang it man that was the one we needed for today that was a good fish that was probably 25 inches or bigger let's take a look at this hook and see what happened this hook was razor sharp Unbelievable. Nothing really wrong with the hook. Just, you know what? He probably turned sharp enough and I couldn't uh, gain line on him and he just popped the hook. Dang it, man. Story of my freaking life. There's one. 
Whoa, Jesus. Jesus, this, this might be a bigger fish. Nope, just has a little attitude. <sighs> There's a good fish. Okay, here we go. Nailed this one hard too. I think he's a good fish, I don't know. Hard to tell, he hit like a ton of bricks. Feels a little bit heavier. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Definitely a little bit bigger. Not a whole lot bigger, but better than 20 inches. Or not, <laughs> maybe he is 20 inches. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. This little guy could pull. I don't know why he felt like he was so big, but I don't know, whatever, we'll take it. There she goes. I had to, you know, build the adrenaline of the video a little bit more. Get you guys uh, sitting on the edge of your seats. <laughs> the one I lost maybe was about that size. I don't know, it's hard to tell sometimes. But, you know, that was probably like 21, 22 inches. All right guys, so I think that's it for the evening. We, uh, you know, lost the bite a little bit once uh, the tide went slack and then it took a while for the tide to finally start coming in and it's just about starting to flood and we probably could, ca could still catch some more fish but i'm getting hungry my uh jaw is feeling a little bit more pain from uh narrating for you guys and uh you know i'm happy with what we caught we caught probably like you know two dozen or more schooly stripers on the fly you know we caught enough fish that i'll probably have to edit some out and uh you know what these little schoolies lacked in size they definitely made up for in spunk and uh, it always helps you know when you're fishing with a fly rod or any type of light tackle equipment you know notice i'm not trying to catch these fish with my 250 stall and uh nine foot mojo you know it would, it would get old really really quick if i was doing if that was happening um but uh yeah i love fishing this area this time of year like mid to late june it's uh just a great time when there's a ton of bait up here there's you know a ton of fish and uh, definitely as the summer progresses, then you'll notice like I'll start fishing like other areas like the surf, like, you know, other areas around the island in the kayak, just because I feel like the fish like spread out a little bit more and like you get better action like all around. But uh, definitely if you're heading out this way, like mid to late June, early July, definitely try hitting the north side around Fort Pond, you know, Gardner's Island area. And uh, you'll be surprised what you can see, what you can catch back here. Like today we only caught small fish, but there are big fish back here, you know, believe me. Um, and anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and are looking forward to more videos like this and a great season. And never forget, live to fish, fish to live, and I'll see you guys in the next one.